Hello everyone and welcome back to What Are for Dentistry. Have you ever tried of setting up a specialized practice after MDS in oral pathology and microbiology? What if I say that this field is no more a non-clinical field, it's only in our heads? Will you agree? Well, to make you realize the potential of this field as a specialized practitioner today, we have with us Dr. Arvind Babu, a professor at the Department of Oral and Maxillofacial Pathology, Sri Balaji Dental College and Hospital, Chennai. He is also the Assistant Director at the Center for Oral Cancer Prevention, Awareness and Research, Bharat University, and runs his specialized practice as the Director of Arvind Multi Speciality Dental Care Center, Chennai. He has authored almost 39 textbooks in dentistry and one of his highlight book being Dental Awareness in Braille and Sign Language. This is first of its kind in the world so far. He also has more than 170 publications in his name and is an executive member of the Indian Association of Oral and Maxillofacial Pathologists and associate editor of Indian Journal of Multidisciplinary Dentistry and is a consultant oral oncologist at Apollo Proton Cancer Care Center and Rela Hospital, Chennai. So let's hear what he has to say on how can you have a specialized practice after MDS in oral pathology and microbiology. Hello, sir, and welcome you on our channel, What After Dentistry. It's a pleasure to have you on our channel today to talk about how to have a specialized dental practice after MDS in oral pathology. So thank you so much for coming on our channel, and it's a pleasure to have you. Welcome you once again. Thank, thanks, thanks, Dr. Rasaini, and thanks, Dr. Pippin, for giving me the opportunity. And it is my pleasure to, to share my knowledge and my experience uh, for our uh, undergraduates and postgraduates and budding dental surgeons through your channel, madam. It's my pleasure, my pleasure. Thank you so much, sir. Yes, sir. So, sir, before we get into the formal discussion of how can one have a specialized dental practice, we would like to know more about you. How has been your journey in dentistry so far? Um, exactly, you started with the word uh, formal discussion. I don't want to be a formal throughout the session itself. I just want to be casual and I just want to be in students' perspective. It's a sort of asking my own flashback uh, how you have finished your uh, 12th standard and how you have joined your college. So it's a sort of refreshing my old memories and I have to start over there. So let it be, let myself be some sort of open with all, all, all audience. I, I'm just going to talk about students' perspective. I, I'm not here to guide you in my perspective. I just want you to uh, uh, hold my hand and come towards this side. So I'm just lending my hand towards you. So basically, after our higher secondary, um, I don't know, we have uh, divided MBBS separately, BDS separately, and other uh, sciences separately. Still, I have a doubt uh, why, why they have separated BDS separately. We, we do study uh, general about uh, MBBS, whatever they are studying, and apart from that, it is a specialty subject. How an ENT should be and how an ophthalmologist should be. From my perspective, we could have been a sort of a basic medical graduate and we could have got a degree in uh, dentistry. So, at the beginning, day one itself, we started feeling that uh, I have got a less score, I couldn't get MBBS, I have joined in BDS. So, when we are starting itself, mentally, we are thinking that we are somewhere down. I just want to break that we are nowhere down. I, I'm, I'm nowhere down here. I, I, after UG, I did my PG, 17 years got over. It's a very long way, uh, 20 years of uh, uh, postgraduate and post uh, uh, working as a staff member. So, that stage itself, you know, our budding uh, youngsters, you know, they're thinking that I didn't got MBBS seat, I got BDS seat either because of mark or because of cost effectiveness. That, that's different. So the passion is uh, there in few, few uh, populations. Other populations, they, the, the initial uh, block, mind block, we just break that you, we are nowhere inferior to any branches in this world. Each and every branch, whether it is technical branch or technology or uh, science or literature, 
it is unique on its own. Yes. So you do, don't compare uh, you as a lesser degree doctor and uh, the, them as a higher degree doctor. And I, I feel that we are much more uh, uh, superior in the, sense, in the sense of knowledge. We have a basic knowledge of medicine. We have basic knowledge of surgery. We have basic knowledge of general medicine, general surgery, pharmacology, physiology, microbiology. Apart from that, we have a thorough knowledge, in-depth knowledge of tent and materials. Yes. If you ask my tent, like, like a sort of engineer, no, I am I am just learning about tensile strength and compressive strength over here, which I, which may not be helpful for my clinical practice, but my, my knowledge and curriculum is designed in such a way that we are superior. So I have I have joined uh, my undergraduate at the year of 1996. Uh, uh, at Bangalore, that time it was Bangalore University, now it will become as a Rajiv Gandhi University of Health Science. So that time I faced the same problem. I didn't got a medical seat. I got a seat of, I have two options. Either I should take engineering or I should take uh, BSc, Agricultural Science. So here, the, the one, one more parental component will be there. So most of the parents, they think that their wards should be a, a doctor, some doctor, some doctor. So, 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 so that there are another hiccup starts. One hiccup is I am less than medicine. Second hiccup is some pressure from parents. As a uh, higher, after finishing my higher secondary, I have to balance with the parents. I have to balance to the society. The, the, we should be a bit matured at that uh, time. Whatever your parents say and whatever you feel, you try to discuss with them. So you just, just try to justify what you are going to do. Because once if you step inside, there is no chance of looking back. Yes. We have to rock. That there's no whatever whatever job is either you think once if you step inside if you if you have if you just you just have a full amount of confidence inside you and you should talk okay so i had a, i my, my here my, my parents uh, took the decision for me being as a dental surgeon so i, I did my ug from market and college bangalore i finished my five years uh, undergraduate it was a sort of uh, bit uh, so what, what i used to say uh, somewhere around 20 years back and all, uh, it's not that much uh, uh, developed the way of uh, knowledge we had. We, we, some some segments of all, there will, there will be a sort of uh, lack of teaching staff. So many things were there. In spite of that, we have studied our on our own. That time, very few colleges will be there. College. Here, we have so many colleges in each and every cities. So I have acquired knowledge. I, I don't say I have acquired knowledge. I was trying to acquire knowledge in that. I was trying to acquire knowledge, whatever possible. So I, I, I have undergone so many failures. Nothing, uh, I, I don't see that uh, uh, you can't uh, taste failures itself. Once if you taste failures only, you can taste the real taste of success. If you see, if you have a pinch of salt in your tongue only, you can uh, uh, feel the sugar taste. So I, I, I don't want to taste only sugar only. I want to taste uh, some sort of sour, some sort of salt, some sort of uh, sugar, everything mixed. It's life is mixed, not only in a profession. Everything it's mixed. So I, what I thought, uh, I just uh, sort of, a, it was a sort of a, a mechanical way of study. So I have to pass for my father. I don't want him to pay the break fees. So I have to finish. So my, my drawback was, it was not knowledge based. It was a result based study. So, so there, I th there I want you to feel uh, it is a professional growth. If I can't learn anything in my undergraduate, I can't learn anymore outside, even with a big practitioner or even with a big uh, colleges or wherever it may be. So I, I, I was realizing after that, after that, I was uh, in a position to pass the, pass the course and come out without any fail in subjects. That, that's one concept. The other concept is, uh, I have learned one thing in my mind that if, if you once finish the course, if you stop updating yourself, you can't uh, move, you can't uh, shine in your life. So after that, uh, 2001, I have joined my postgraduate in Chennai, uh, State College and College and Hospital. There, uh, again, again, the, the, again, that same thing. Uh, clinical subjects are in a different uh, platform. We, we ourselves started calling oral pathologists not clinical subjects. I don't know why, why we, we had that uh, uh, concept of calling oral pathologists non clinical, and uh, I don't, nobody will call. Uh, uh, not an orthodontist, not an oral surgeon, call as a non clinical. We ourselves were started calling oral pathologists a non clinical subject. So, there again, it is a sort of financial matter. If you could have got a good 
அமௌண்ட் ஆஃப் குட் ரேங்கிங் இஃப் யூ காட் சார்ட் ஆஃப் ஆஃப்ரன்சியர் ஒரு சர்ஜரியர் வாட் எவர் பிரான்ச் ஐ நீட் சோ ஹியர் ஃபார் ஃபார் ஐ ஹவ் மை சிச்சுவேஷன் ஐ ஐ டுக் ஓரல் பேத்தாலஜி தட் டைம் இட் வாஸ் சம் எக்ஸாக்ட்லி 20 இயர்ஸ் பேக் எக்ஸாக்ட்லி 20 இயர்ஸ் பேக் தட் டிசிஷன் வாஸ் டேக்கன் போத் மை பேரண்ட்ஸ் அண்ட் மை செல்ஃப் ஆல்சோ மை செல்ஃப் இன் தி வே தட் ஐ ஹவ் நாட் டோட்டலி இன்வால்வ்ட் டில் ஐ ஜாயின் இன் சைட் ஓரல் பேத்தாலஜி so now i i my request to the pursuing students of undergraduate and post graduate whatever it may be either you have choose on your own or whether either you have joined because of pressure or either you have joined because of your financial city status or financial conditions but think that you have opted a good uh, branch good branch of medical science industry i used to say it's a good very good branch of medical science you can you can, you can and like anything your knowledge is beyond what beyond our imagination you don't limit yourself you don't uh, put a line that uh, i am a lab oriented subject or uh, research subject because after coming to pathology then uh, oral pathology only i know that i am thorough in embryology anatomy i am thorough in physiology i am thorough in microbiology pharmacology and everything and also pathology so i know the development i know the histology i know the pathology i know the treatment pharmacology so which which who else will have this opportunity to know the pathology once if you know the pathology and pathology is only you can able to treat i am very proud to be a pathologist so it was not uh, you see i am not joined pathology as a passion but after joining pathology i have developed passion so passion is not a thing that uh, you determine i want to become a doctor and coming as a doctor so many people with passion they can't able to come and uh, shine much much in that in, in our field because of uh, they are they are underestimating themselves that the problem is inside us we underestimate ourselves that our capability is this much only we are a small we 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 deal only with uh, 32 teeth or we deal with only with oral cavity all this thing and this thing uh, all all this this demarcation lines and all no we ourselves are drawing we are, I, i think that i i should take responsibility for my own uh, 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 uh reach so if i have a thing that where i want to reach means that's a broad circle i have to create myself i can't fit in into some other person who had created a small circle i can go and sit inside this circle so i we should be in a position to create w- what level you have to achieve where you want to go grow so so uh joined pg have learned uh, post graduate again during post graduate i have studied because of my head of department because i had i've got a good head of department i don't want to let her down i have studied more because i don't want to let her down she gave that much of freedom i think now that this ideas back and all it's a, it's a, what we say it's a sort of floppy floppy disk era now 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 google era we used to call there and all i still remember my thesis and everything and all i have submitted in a, a floppy disk uh properties and we used to uh, write more instead of typing more so I, i have written my thesis complete thesis in writing that has given a sort of knowledge uh, what what uh, i have evolved so during uh, my post graduate i i had faced lots of difficulties in selecting textbooks starting from selecting textbooks and starting from uh, select, uh, selecting articles for my journal clubs and seminars so all the data what i part was uh, international data i didn't have any national data to study i can't study the prevalence of dental caries for my own population i can't able to study the prevalence of squamous cell carcinoma in my own population maybe whatever it may be in the form in tamil nadu or it may be in the south india it may be in the come throughout india even the eruption and the shedding date what we have studied it's, it's uh, based on the australian population not the indian populations so this thing and all uh, i felt after finishing my pgs i felt these are the uh, lacunas i found i am doing i am pursuing my studies in india mm-hmm. but all my textbooks are uh, up, uh, from abroad all are edition from uh, abroad editions we have indian edition and south east asian editions everywhere they have uh, given its western population western population western populations so with that knowledge how i am how i am going to approach my own patient whether those lesions what i have studied are common in my own population or not so this things only had given a small spark, spark to contribute in academics 
to contribute in academics. So I, I just want the subjects to be in the form of simpler way and reach everybody, reach all the students. So uh, the concept is reach all the students. Those who are talkers, they can spend some time and they'll go to the library and they'll read. But I'm, I'm, I should concentrate on those who are uh, at the level of learning, at the level of learning. So these things have made me to contribute uh, towards my uh, academics or uh, sorry, towards my publications or whatever textbooks I have contributed, whatever articles I have contributed, these things I have contributed. So one thing I was very much clear that after becoming a pathologist, when I started my clinic, uh, same like how, what after uh, PDS, what after MDS? That question arised me also. That question arised very well, what after BDS? I was very much confused, what after BDS? But uh, what after MDS? I am very satisfied that uh, knowingly or unknowingly, I took the course of oral pathology. And I am very much happy with the knowledge what I have acquired from oral pathology. And that is more than sufficient to diagnose any, uh, any diseases, X, Y, Z of any parts of your body. I have oral manifestation. I have oral manifestation. I, I can find a nephrological disease. I can find a dermatological disease. So I, I feel happy that I've got more number of uh, medical friends. I think this oral pathology is the only branch where you can get a, a medical friends. So oral pathology, we deal with oncology, we deal with diabetes, we deal with gynecology, we development. So I have a gynecologist friends, pain friends. I have a sort of uh, neurology, neurological pain means I refer neurologist. So I have uh, uh, increased my array of uh, uh, application of knowledge towards medical science. So now I, I thought that I, I should get referral letters. I, I, and previously you get a, a cardiac opinion for teeth extraction. Now I made cardiac disease you get dental opinion before doing cardiac surgery. So this was my this was my concept. So this was my concept. But everywhere, you, even even I, even I get uh, uh, IVF treatment, you get uh, dental opinion before start of IVF treatment. So we have lots of opportunities. That those are all unexplored, unexplored opportunities. So I've I've, I've been a consultant in uh, two three hospitals. I'm going. I have my own practice. So like that, uh, uh, mistakes. What you do? That's a, Good lesson what you're going to teach. Don't scare to commit mistakes. Don't think that all the decisions taken by you will be correct always. We have to adapt to the situation, adapt to your idea, and don't run behind it. Run it nothing comes to us very easily. We have to run behind that and uh, we can reach it's all, all in reaching distance only. Probably uh, your vision is not towards the goal. If your vision is out of goal, it's unreachable. If your vision is towards the goal, it's uh, reachable. So this is how I can simplify my your, your first question. And I say that whatever it happens to everybody, it happened to me myself also. Uh, family pressure, parental pressure, uh, uh, financial pressure, or here to get this everything. But today, I, I, so called. Uh, uh, I, I can I can say that I am a part of a such group. I, I I am a part inside a group of successful practitioners. I am I just want to uh, insist I am a successful practitioner. Then pathologist, pathology only any 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 branch you see you, you want to be a successful practitioner. It's a practice orient, oriented uh, subject. Center. You are a specialty. So after uh, basic medical graduation also. We have to go for uh, post graduation and do your super specialty. But after doing your undergraduate, you can open your clinic, you just apply your knowledge and try to upgrade your uh, knowledge in each and every individual aspect. So this will be uh, uh, my experience. What I mean to say is you, you don't uh, live inside other's box. You create a box or you create a circle or whatever uh, shape and you want to live in that and you want to succeed in that. That's not very difficult. Uh, anytime probably you can call me second time or third time. I'm ready to help for uh, our uh, viewers. So they will feel some sort of, it's, it's, it's a sort of a motivational speech and it is so, sort of showing a light what we are uh, seeing. You know, without light we are seeing. That's the reason we find that uh, nothing is before us. I mean, just you, between myself, and we just want to throw some lights and say that, no, Baba, you have a Thing, very good future before you don't sit, get up and uh, take gra grab your opportunity. It is open. And now, now if maybe probably in, in, I don't know whether you have other questions under in my next questions. If what opportunities means, I can list out hundred opportunities. I think I, I think uh, with this note uh, we can move on to our uh, next question. Uh, yes, sir. Is, uh,
Yes, absolutely. Right. You know, you very correctly mentioned, you know, when we uh, interact with uh, uh, industry experts like you who have, uh, you know, uh, an immense number of uh, years of experience, like 20 years, 25 years. And we, when we talk to you, we generally feel that, especially the young generation, you know, they feel that, oh, at that time, you know, 20 years back, there was no struggle, there was no competition. So it was an easy life and it was a easy, you know, easy going stuff for uh, with uh, with with the older generation but as you as you mentioned it correctly that you also had the same kind of uh, you know situations in your life you had parental pressure you had financial constraints you would also have you know you had thoughts of what should i do next after bds or after mds so uh, i think this is a very good note that every you know everyone who is listening to us today they can uh, you know they, you can see that this happens with everyone no matter what years of experience or how or at what stage you were as he mentioned very correctly during his time when he was doing the bds they, we didn't had so much of you know knowledge or we didn't had so much of uh, uh, good colleges or maybe good professors to teach at that moment because it it just started at that moment and today, when you have everything, utilize this knowledge, as he mentions very correctly, utilize your knowledge and make sure that you do not feel or you don't have any kind of an inferiority complex that you know, you're less than somebody else. So make sure that you are in that circle of, uh, you know, uh, you create your own circle and you don't fit into the uh, other people's expectation. Create your own expectations and excel in that. So I think that's very, very well said, sir. So, sir, please guide our audience in terms of how can they start a specialized practice after completing MDS in oral pathology? Uh, yes, ma'am. That's another good, good question. If we're going to uh, uh, talk about my specialist practice, I just want the undergraduate to take a message that once you finish your uh, uh, Bachelor of Dental Surgery, you are ready to practice. You don't wait to do postgraduate or you don't wait for anything that, that you keep it as a second option. Don't think that the, the knowledge what I have acquired is not sufficient to start a practice. The knowledge what you have, what you got in undergraduate nowadays in all colleges where you have so many number of quotas of root canal treatment, so many number of quotas of upper denture, lower denture, complete denture, the extraction, impaction, so many DCA, MCA, UGC, NAC, NIRF, and everything is giving you a pressure of forming as an exactly exact academic curriculum to come out. Come out. Nowadays, uh, undergraduates are uh, undergraduates final year endodontic examinations, so they are performing root canal treatment. So I have I have learned root canal after coming out. So you don't you have a basic knowledge, basic knowledge. The only thing is we don't have the confidence. We, 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 are, we have less content to start practice under. So for me, the main thing after dentistry is practice, practicing. The practicing is going to feed you like anything. There is no uh, limitation for the uh, amount of uh, uh, money you are going to get. It's up to you only. You, you have to limit yourself how much you want. So the one thing, all the undergraduates, you be mentally uh, um, confident to start your uh, practice and do. So that, that's first for undergraduate students. Postgraduate students uh, for oral pathology, I'm telling, uh, you don't think that uh, I'm still an uh, undergraduate only. I don't have the knowledge of uh, doing root canal. I don't have the knowledge of uh, doing ortho appliance. I don't have the knowledge of uh, doing an infection. I don't have knowledge of this thing. How can I apply my oral pathology knowledge in clinic? So if somebody has this question, you just erase it immediately and think that I am the boss. I know the pathology of bone. I know the pathology of the periodontium. I am the person who is, who is going to call my periodontist and say that you have to do this treatment. Treatment. I am the specialist, specialist, specialist person to say my implantologist, you put your implant or not. The bone osteointegration will happen or not. I am the person who's, who knows all the physiology, whether I should uh, do impaction during lactation because of reversal calcium level, the bone is more fragile. You have a very good knowledge. Surgeon will do or some other person will try to extract and they may fracture the mandible. But you know the knowledge that that uh, sort of reversal calcium from feeding mothers. No? So you, you know that thing. And, and apart from that, you have a knowledge of a pathology of a simple dental caries. 
So you, you can start from simple dentectomies. The dental caries and simple gingivitis and simple periodontitis. You don't have to focus bigger. There are people, there are specialists. They can come and uh, do it for you. As a specialist, you concentrate on oral mucosal lesions. Either it may be a hard tissue lesion, soft tissue lesions. I don't think nobody can beat pathologists in diagnosis of disease. So any any swelling to a general uh, practitioners, they may treat with a conservative approach. You know the pathology. You should know whether I should give antibiotic for the swelling or I should do FNAC for the swelling. I, I can't simply give antibiotic and uh, send this patient. So you are in a higher thing. So the knowledge what you have gained, that is your uh, amount of uh, income you are generating. For example, I, I am very thorough in my subject. In my day-to-day -day practice, if any patient comes, if somebody says that I have this ulcer, I have a doubt that it, it could have been a cancer. I've got a very big uh, psychological uh, stigma. My family members are very aggressive. My parents are very aggressive. I thought I have developed uh, cancer and cancerophobia. This cancerophobia and the lesion of the family tension and uh, stress the family is undergoing because of that small ulcer in Tangno that is not valued by the money or anything. Not valued by the money or anything. So you are a better person to say, no, this is a ulcer which caused because of trauma. You are yet uh, non-veg last week because of, the, you know, the history of history taking because of the non-veg eating the chicken, you know, the chicken bone got a prick and you got an ulcer. There is no uh, worry about uh, malignancy. Malignancy. You just prescribe him some basic thing and you charge your consultation as a specialty consultation charge. I don't write prescription. I say you don't have any disease and I will charge for the patient. Because my knowledge is that, that I, I, I'm just relieving them from the cancerophobia. I'm relieving them because my knowledge is very, very important. You don't restrict your knowledge for 200 rupees or 300 rupees or 100 rupees and uh, keep on saying that uh, I, uh, what, what, what a pathologist I do, what a pathologist is, is, is psychiatrist, neurologist, nephrologist. The consultation itself will start from 1,500 rupees, 1,700 rupees. We, that's why I said we, we ourselves has to project our knowledge. The, the amount what we are charging is for our knowledge. You can charge 750 rupees, you can charge 1,000 without prescription. I charge my patient saying nothing is there for you, go happy. This is my way of practice. Because that thing nobody can do. Uh, uh, impaction, they have to do and get 2,000 rupees. Here, you are not doing giving any prescription. You are just saying that nothing, it won't uh, turn into cancer. You go eat properly, eat more amount of antioxidant, go you pay me 1,500 rupees and go. This, this kind of consultation, per day, 10 patients, means 15,000 rupees you are earning per day. So we should be in a position that you, you, are, you are a sort of uh, what, what a next level of uh, knowledge you have. The next level of knowledge in the sense, molecular and genetic level of knowledge, not clinical level of knowledge. You have a knowledge of molecular, genetical, and uh, what uh, organogenesis, development of teeth, sixth week of intrauterine life itself, you know what is happening for the teeth. The others, they fracture, they keep composite filling and they'll send. Now, you should, you should say that this is a case of fluorosis. How much amount if you give also, you can't be able to do cleaning. You, you can't be able to make it white. So you, you, you are thorough in the subject. So pathology practitioners, they should they themselves should think that I am not a normal practitioner. I'm not, I, there is nobody to compete with me. No, no, none, none of the other specialties are, are uh, not, they are dependent on us in some or the other way. Yeah, after root canal, they are going to submit the periodical surgery tissue to you only. If the impla implant failure, the implant with tissues will come to you only. After perio surgery, any excess uh, granulation tissue, it's going to come to you only. Uh, ortho treatment, any chronic irritation in the wire, uh, any ulcer happened, the biopsy is going to come to you only. You know the pathology, everything. So this is the high time should come out to the public that I am a sort of your family physician, that the concept has gone. The concept of family physician has gone. Still, the fam concept of family physician was there. The disease is not much prevailing. Uh, we used to go to our family physician. He will refer to whom to go. go. Go and see the psychiatrist. Go and see the cardiologist. Now, we don't know where to go only. So, we should create a confidence among the public that I know the subject. 
I know the basics. I know the pathology. Let me try. You just, after this, okay, you have a good amount of bone support. You can go for implant. You have, you, your parental disease, it's a sort of a genetically disease. Family, it's carrying out through family. Even though if you do flap surgery also, it, it will be uh, successful for three to four years only. So everything, you, you, you just take the in charge that I am, I am a sort of a person who is going to take care of the complete family of the patient and just going to advise the patient everything. That's the, uh, that's the thing, what you're going to day-to-day -day practice. Obviously, I'm doing my extraction, I'm doing my root canal treatment, I'm doing my fillings, everything. That's that separate thing. But apart from that, the section of patient, no, you are the boss. Whether uh, taking the X-ray, periapical radiation, see whether if I do root canal, I get success, or can I allow the teeth to be removed? So that's where you are standing. You know, not like a machine, you are going to do root canal for all the tooth. Not like a machine, you are going to treat all the radio opacities and all the radio lucencies. You have the knowledge, this is a normal radio lucency, you don't want treatment. This is a normal radio opacities, you don't want treatment. So all the radio lucency and radio opacities, what you see in CBCT or CT or MRA and all, we are in a much, much in a commanding position that which is uh, physiology, with this, which is pathology. I should say that, no, no, this is normal, normal uh, radiolucency only. You don't have any disease under. You go and uh, happily, you just enjoy. This kind of practice, one, one kind of practice. Second kind of practicing, what I want to say for uh, pathologist means, we have to expand, we have to convey our knowledge to other medical practitioners. We are not doing. So, for example, uh, everybody has a tendency to go to general physician. For example, for a child is having tooth pain, they don't come to dentist, they go to pediatrician. Mm. They go to pediatrician first. Then only a pediatrician will, uh, pediatrician will uh, either uh, give some calcium tablets or give some toothpaste or give some something and they will send. Everything, even a small ulcerate tongue, they will go to general physician. After three to four weeks only, they will send to us that uh, this ulcer is not uh, reducing by giving a ribavirin or a vitamin or whatever it may be. So the thing is, you should reach the general practitioner, a sort of gynecologist. I have started approaching a gynecologist, pediatrician, and, and everybody saying that uh, I am capable of doing all these things. See, after I, I feel after every childbirth, oral pathology has all rights to visit the infant. Okay, hospitals should call the oral pathologist to examine the oral cavity. For, for example, I used to go to some hospital the day of the uh, infant's a child or no, pediatrician will come and see the opinion, they'll give, they'll give the opinion and go, everything is fine. So I have to go and say, I have to see the oral cavity. I have to find any abnormalities in the oral cavity. I should uh, convey if it's a cleft palate or a cleft lip is obvious, cleft palate. Uh, the one more thing is I, I'm just monitoring any uh, natal or neonatal teeth. I'm just going to monitor any tongue abnormalities or soft tissue abnormalities. I'm going to monitor any tongue tying is present or not. So I, we should go inside the medical fatality and all the hospitals where the deliveries are takes place, they should call a oral pathologist and give a checkup. Because of that, we, 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 I have saved so many kids. I just, I just want to say two, three experiences. Uh, for palatal cleft, very minute, minute palatal cleft. Okay. If the palatal cleft baby, the mother starts feeding, she, he or she lands up with aspiration of milk. That aspiration of milk is a medical emergency. Who is going to see? Gynecologist is not going to open the kid's infant mouth and see. Pediatrician is maximum. He will see the tongue. He won't go inside and uh, see the palate. So these things and all, we have to project ourselves to the gynecologist that I am in a position to see all this thing. And one more kid with uh, um, tongue tie. The mother is very annoyed. The kid is not taking the feed. They, 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 are, they are thinking in the way of lactose intolerance. They are thinking in the way of uh, some other thing. They are thinking in the way of giving uh, substitute diets, all this thing. So like a referral, I got the call from a gynecologist. I went there and I saw that it was a tongue tie. The parents were very oppressive. As a female, you know, mother will have severe pain, not giving the milk to the baby. And the kid will be crying because of hungry. The gynecologist will be in a position, what happened exactly? Exactly. It's just a small tongue tie. See, you, 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 are, you are doing a life-saving job. You are doing a life-saving job. So in that three days old baby, tongue tie is very simple, not like a 16 or 17 years. 
we can put a small uh, incision, a small uh, cut with BP blade, and ask the mother to take the take it to the room to start feeding. There is no re-epithelialization. There is no need for suture. It's painless. No need to give any drugs. The moment third day itself, you can uh, make the kid uh, and mother happy with no amount is equal to that. No amount. I feel that I'm proud. I, I have done so many works like that. And, and I want others to do all these things. Then I told the gynecologist, why during gynec during uh, first trimester, second trimester, third trimester, all the patients coming with me, they're coming with me with all the swellings, uh, uh, whatever, uh, pericoronitis or tooth weak or whatever it may be. W why can't, if they're planning for a baby, why can't they plan for a dental treatment? You all ever know. You should tell them that if you plan for a baby, go to a dentist. You should not get any sort of dental alignment because you are saying that don't give any drugs, don't give any medicines. That, that's some sort of uh, hypothetical. Now, government has uh, approved and uh, put in a, whether it's a safe in uh, lactation, safe in pregnancy or not under. So now, so many infertility centers came. So I, we, we used to go and discuss with infertility centers. When you plan for IVF, that's, that's a sort of their, uh, uh, what do you say? They're praying God. They're, they're going to get a gift of God's gift. But when you're carrying the God's gift, suddenly if your third molar are giving a big swelling and if it causes septicemia or some other diseases, who is going to be responsible? Who, 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 I can't blame a thing. We are not reached the public. We have not reached the general practitioners. We have not reached the general practitioners. So nowadays they are, say, they are sending, get an opinion. So I just plan for another uh, one or one and a half, two years. So whatever DK teeth I will fill whatever root canal I will do, whatever wisdom tooth I will remove. She, and I will say that because of hormonal alteration during pregnancy, your gums will become weak. You have to come on, on, on second trimester for a cleaning or gum uh, strengthening uh, procedures. During lactation, because of hormonal changes, your gums will become very fragile. Your gums will bleed. You have to come. Sometimes you have a chance of getting a gestational diabetic. When you have a chance of getting gestational diabetic, you have to come and meet me. So who, who is going to market for you if you, if you are not marketing yourself? Nobody will do. Nobody will do. The, 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 the tray is uh, open. We, we have to market. Then I, I met pediatricians. None of the pediatricians, I'm not blaming anybody over here. I'm uh, speaking from my heart. None of the pediatricians, none of the general, the general physicians, they don't know how many deciduous teeth and how many permanent teeth. But we, we read what is the smallest bo bone in ear, what is the smallest foramen uh, in the uh, uh, biggest foramen, smallest foramen, all the names, all the ribs, all the clavicles, all the bones, everything I, I know. But they, they can't even differentiate whether it is a milk teeth or a permanent teeth. Their knowledge is very little in dentistry. So they still they think that teeth decay because of calcium deficiency. They're giving calcium syrups and they're giving a calcium uh, tablet. Instead, you tell gynecologist, you start your calcium at sixth week of intrauterine life. You calc the, start the calcium and uh, folic acid, folic acid for your oral mucosa and uh, uh, calcium for your heart tissue, soft tissue development. Sixth month, seventh month, third month, uh, all these things you can incorporate. Everything, even cardiology, nephrology patients, you have to update the knowledge in general medicine. For example, a dialysis patient comes now, each and every dialysis, they give blood thinness. You should be in a position to stop the blood thinness and do the procedures. Nobody can do that. They, they, they will call for uh, opinion, second opinion. Other dentists, no, they will call for second opinion. They will call for consultant. You, you are the boss. You go as a consultant. You know, you know pathology. So what I mean to say is, this is, we have a cream over the cake. You, you, you know, we have not touched the cream and test, started tasted. We, are, we have to touch and start tasting. You just feel that happy. That's a different happy that as a oral pathologist, I have saved root canal, I can save the tooth, but I've saved the life. 100 implants, I can make them assisting in chewing, but I have saved 100 lives by, by finding a small initial uh, lesion itself. By, by finding a small lesion, we can able to diagnose and we can treat. We are the position to save the human lives. Oral pathologists are dealing with save the human life and to reduce the patient's stress. Stress. So like this specialty practice, you just uh, start going to oncological centers. You you have a you are a pathologist. You you know how to operate cryostat. If not cryostat, you just train yourself in doing cryostat. You try try to attach with your oncology team. Do cryostat. 
if you give them a uh, margins is positive or negative you get 15000 rupees 20000 rupees per case per month if you get four to five cases also it will come around 70 to 80000 rupees which is not a salary for a post graduate staff in a private uh, dental colleges you go to some hospital dental hospitals you go as a visiting dentist consultant pathologist you have can do you can project yourself all the pathology from head and neck are not uh, can be handled by general pathologists. It can be handled by oral pathologists also because uh, we get the general pathology uh, report that adenoma of uh, salivary gland. We don't know what adenoma of salivary gland. Malignant salivary gland tumor. I don't know what malignant salivary gland tumor. If I know the exact category, what malignant salivary gland tumor, I should decide whether I should give radiotherapy or I should give chemotherapy or surgery. For example, if you want to, oral pathologists can understand, mucoepidermoid carcinoma is radio resistant. If somebody gives that as a carcinoma, I can give, radi I can give uh, radiation uh, to them. So the knowledge you have to expose to others. So whenever you get opportunity, instead of talking or instead of presenting your paper in IDA conferences, you try to reach in IMA conferences. You try to reach, give the guest lectures in uh, medical associations. You try to give some uh, guest lectures in uh, 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 other paramedical staffs. It's very important. Paramedical staff, if a sister doesn't know with RPT, uh, with RPD, I should put that incubation tube. The RPD will go inside. She has to be trained that RPD has to be removed and put that uh, tube. None of the OT sisters are aware, aware of uh, dental processes. So th there are so many avenues. We can we can probably, in next thing, no, we can take this topic I can give hundreds and hundreds. We have forensic, we have molecular biology, we have uh, we can start a lab, we can start a genetic procedures, we can do a lot and lots more unimaginable. I, I have thought on my own. Everybody has everybody will be thinking, but they're scared to apply apply whether it will go wrong or go right. Nobody is now. Now I'm I'm telling that we three, uh, Vipin, um, you and myself, we are there with you to all the students that. Any queries or any mails, we will guide you, we will support you, we will be behind you through this channel. We can, we can, we can guide them. Anything mail, we can guide them, we can support them. You can, you can, you, you have two career options. One is as a researcher, one as a practitioner. Yes, absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. So, so, sir, last tip or advice for uh, any dental graduate that you think they should follow. And as I said, from starting, uh, it's not a formal question. I'm very casual. I, 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 I thought uh, giving advice is easy, but uh, following advice is very difficult. I also face so many people that uh, advised me and uh, it's difficult for me to follow. So everybody has some thought inside your brain. You, know? you do it sincerely. Sincerely, as advice, what I give, whatever job you want to do, do it wholeheartedly, do it sincerely and try to uh, take decisions uh, uh, now and then you don't prolong it so you don't have time so do things quickly nobody waits for us the world the world is moving like anything so my I, I can i don't know how to if you have to find a synonym for advice but i have to call this as advice only my advice to the student is you are learning in life science not uh, arts and science or something so the ones the life science means you are handling with life so at most you you have to think the knowledge is going to knowledge what you acquire is going to serve your father and mother it's going to serve your own kid so when you think that the knowledge what i'm going to acquire it's going to serve my father serve my mother the, the root canal not the root canal treatment or pediatric root canal what i'm learning i'm going to do it for my kid if if that thing comes no you can get a proper uh, thorough knowledge in your subjects and the sort of uh, application knowledge you need and your sort of lateral thinking. You don't stop uh, yourself uh, with your uh, lateral thinking. Just do some lateral thinking. That's very important. Don't go. You just put your path and travel. There are so many paths are there. Otherwise, you just make a, uh, find a successful model, do some modification and do. It, it won't be a sort of uh, plagiarism in uh, life also. There are so many plagiarism in uh, publications, all this thing and all. I just want every individual to be special, special. They, they are special in their unique uh, way. So they have to decide and they have to do it sincerely without any hesitations. Do whatever you fall and be bold and uh, do. That's my heartiest wishes to my dear uh, students and my fraternity people. And I, I, I should very happy interactions with you, madam. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. so absolutely correct. So please follow this. So many take home messages that sir has given 
through the through the through his session today so thank you very much sir for enlightening the audience and i think giving so many wonderful tips that you have given you know in terms of how can one have a specialized practice how can they reach out to the audience and or to the masses and educate them that you know uh, we do have a specialized practice and you know you it is very important to consult uh, related to your oral cavity and then get into whatever treatment plan you want to get into so thank you very much sir for coming on our channel once again and sharing all the insights thanks lot man thanks for giving opportunity it's my pleasure pleasure madam best wishes for all thank you so all the audience if you're listening to our session today thank you very much for patiently listening to us i hope that you get motivated and the session is useful for all the bds and the MG mds graduates so somebody who wants to do a specialized practice after mds in oral pathology please like and share this video in your network because this might help out anyone who gets into specialized practice so thank you everyone once again and before i sign off please subscribe to our channel it's absolutely free and i will see you in the next video until then bye and good luck